Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video on a topic that comes up pretty frequently with folks that I know outside of the quick loop space. It's also a topic of conversation that is pretty common within the space as well, and that is the feasibility of the oil change only model, which is uh, the pursuit of a quick loop uh, model where the car count drives the majority of the business model. Um, it's what the industry was founded on. It's what scaled the industry to what it is today. Um, and for reasons uh, that have different types of explanations, the different players in our space have changed that model over the years. Um, and whether it was Shell's acquisition of Pennzoil uh, that led to the decrease in corporate stores of Jiffy Loop down to zero corporate stores, which meant that the only driving force behind that business was the royalty revenue and, and any need for an increase in car count, um, in top line revenue rather, and ticket average. Uh, and that kind of shifting the entire industry because as Jiffy Lube goes, so do the independents. Um, or whether it's the explanation that the intervals got wider and it was no longer feasible to do uh, the kind of car counts that we were seeing in the 90s and uh, early 90s, late 90s. Um, I have in front of me the Nolan Guide from 2008, which is a uh, interesting look into the past. You can see that the car count from 98 to uh, 2002, the average unit uh, was doing over 40 cars a day. And if we fast forward to today, and I only have the 2021 in front of me, we're looking at uh, closer to 29 to 33 cars per day for the average unit. And the question becomes, is it still feasible to do the oil change only model when you're doing that many fewer cars? Um, and there's a few different, uh, there's a few different variables at play here, including, you know, the cost of goods and services, your labor costs, uh, the price of oil per gallon obviously is a main driver and then your ticket average as well and so we're looking at in 1998 the average ticket of $35 and that scaled up as car counts scaled down all the way through 2007 and it remains the case today uh, where ticket average is just skyrocketing and it's uh, and it's being driven by the larger players in the space like the Take Fives and the Jiffy Lubes and the Valvolines and you have some places having ticket averages in the mid 100s. You have some places having average tickets in the high 70s. And, um, and so the, it begs the question, is the oil change only model still even a viable model? At the end of the day, when you're looking at a P&L, you have money going out, you have money coming in. Uh, and at the end of the day, those numbers have to uh, have to flip in order to have a profitable business. And so there's two ways to do it. You can either lower expenses and have that lower car count, uh, or you can have a lower car count but a higher ticket average and have the higher expenses. And so what we have seen most of the players in our space do is triple down on having higher car, uh, having higher ticket averages and creating what they consider to be a perceived value. Uh, even though it is of my opinion, this is a commoditized space. There's no magical way to change oil and there's no, uh, there's no, we're, we're basically a commodity dressed up in an experience. And so it's important to at least be humble enough to acknowledge that and not pretend to be something that you're not. Um, some of these brands, especially brands that lean heavily on other competitors, whether it's a chain of quick loops that features Valvoline when Valvoline's already in the space, at that point you have to ask yourself, what value are you providing when there's already Valvoline instant oil change? Uh, same goes for any of the brands that lean on the larger brands that are already in the space. And so when it comes to being an oil change only business, how are we going to be competitive in a market where the intervals are wider and there's more facilities and there's more consolidation to the top uh, of those uh, players. And it, and it really comes down to being competitive on price. 
Um, one thing that is interesting on this before I move to kind of talking about our model and why we have been successful at this is um, there's a correlation between how fast you perform the service and how many cars you can do and also having a lower ticket average and how many cars uh, come in the door and so when the stores that have the highest car counts they have lower ticket averages the stores that have the highest car counts they have quicker bay times um, and so w the reason that we drive internally in our system car count as a main case is car count can hide a lot of sin car count can solve a lot of problems from staffing to uh, secondary sales to profitability and so we drive car count as the main factor we want to make up on volume at our stores but in some instances when there's too much competition you're not going to be able to make up on volume because there's just only so many people in a community and a lot of the places that we do business are considered tertiary markets and there are several stores that we're in that have towns that are uh, people of 5,000 or less people and so we really need to drive home the expense side of the equation if we're not going to be upside down on that P&L and so we really look to the store of the future because it is very obvious to us that the consumer wants an oil change only experience and so when we build facilities or we go into facilities we need to make sure that the lease is proportionate to the type of business that we're going to do and that means having a lease that is not going to put us out of business in the first six months while we ramp up the business and get people to know us and because this is a commodity dressed up in an experience that means our only other variable that is within our control besides the pricing is the experience itself and we're not going to drive perceived value to the place where 100 year old brands do like Valvoline so we need the experience and the price to be where it's going to be for us to have the LTV which is the lifetime value of the customer be where we need it to be for this to be a sustainable business model so i unequivocally believe that the oil change only model is still perfectly viable when we can get the variables in place that we need them to be and the consumer demands an oil change only experience you can read the reviews of any of the quick lubes in any town in any uh, county and you're going to see people complain about being beat over the head with things that they didn't feel they needed um and so that's what makes this model so appealing it's what made our franchise system grow as fast as it did was it resonated with the franchisees that we have in our system and then they became great stewards of the brand because they believe in the mission at the end of the day the quick loop space will be impacted by how many electric vehicles enter the market but when the dust settles and we are in a building that cost us $150,000 to build and our competitor is in a building that cost them a million dollars to build and their rent is $175,000 a year. There's no amount of ticket average that is going to solve that problem when you're doing 10 to 15 cars a day. And in our case, sometimes, depending on the facility and our expense side of the sheet, 10 cars a day is a profitable store. And I know that's confusing to a lot of old hats in this industry uh, because when they were doing only oil changes, they needed to do 30 cars to break even. But they were running a staff of 10 guys. They were running uh, higher oil costs. So at the end of the day, how I feel about this is what we do on a daily basis. We continue to talk about the oil change only model we continue to have above industry average reviews on Google. We continue to have car count growth in a time when everyone else is having car count contraction as we enter into what's essentially a recession right now. And we are able to be competitive on pricing with not just quick loops, but everybody who offers oil changes, which is something that a lot of people in our space lose sight of. So that's really it for this conversation. Hope it's valuable to you. If you want to reach out to me, 
about anything at all that I just talked about, you can shoot me an email, costa at costaoils.com. Thank you.